And there we are. I'm just going to be sliding this container into the microwave, closing the door, set it for three minutes. It's on high. And that will cook for three minutes, or actually steam for three minutes. When the three minutes is up, I will pause it. Then I will take the contents in the plastic, flip them, and then I'm going to put it in for another three minutes. Now while that's cooking, remember I said I had some skeins, I was dying, so again I'm going to gently squeeze these out. I'm putting them over here right now, keeping them out of the, the uh, just getting them out of the container. And again, you can see that the water's still soapy. Now if I wanted to, I can actually save this and also do some other uh, soaking of some other skeins, which is what I'm going to do. Or I can also recycle some of the yarn, or the, not the yarn, recycle some of the water and use it for this particular situation. However, today I do have some other yarn that I'm going to soak, so I'm going to put this aside. Now I have yarn that I want to dye, and I have the container here. I happen to have a little bit of leftover of the green, the, the uh, spruce, and I have a little bit of the blue. Now one of the things that I like to do is to mix two of the colors, if I can, together, and that's what I use to dye the skeins that I have here that I'm going to weave with. I already have a little bit of dye on there, it's okay, it's not going to matter a whole lot. So I'm going to mix a little bit in here, but I also need some to add some water to that to water it down a little bit. And I still have some of that hot water left over. Mix in here. Oh, sounds like the water is ready to flip, flip it. All right, so I'm gonna mix this in here. And I will add a little bit more of the blue and the green because I do have close to a pound of yarn. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. But let's take a pause over here and see what's happening in the microwave. Did you hear it just beep? So we will open it up, and like I said, I'm going to flip it, yep, it's hot all right, pop that back in there, close the door, and do it again for another three minutes. And then we're going to return back to this area. I'm going to mix up a little dye and get some water in that container. And we'll be back looking at this in a moment. So I'm going to continue using some of the dye. I'm going to use right now a half a teaspoon, maybe not even a total half. I'm going to pop that in there. This is the blue spruce. A little bit of this, not a whole lot because I already have a little bit of dye in there. Put a half a teaspoon or a little bit left, less. Pop those in there. Do some more stirring. Need to go over here and get a little more of the hot water that I have ready. I'm going to do an immersion. I'm going to put all the skeins in the water here. Let me just put it back down here. It's all mixed up. I'm going to pour that in there. Did a good job mixing. Mix this up a little bit more. And I'm going to do the best I can. To put all these in here, squeeze them, and move them around. And this is super wash, so I don't have to be quite as careful as maybe I would if this was 100% wool. Now, the other thing to remember is that these are going to be different shades. It's not going to be solid. If you want it solid, then, and all of them the same, then you might want to use a different method. And it sounds like the microwave is beeping again. 
Now, what I'll do with this is I'm going to also put this in the microwave. I can see different shades coming already, kind of see what's happening. The plan is always to try to have the water turn out clear when you're finished. Yeah, look at all that soapy stuff in there. It's okay. Sometimes you see the soap and sometimes you don't. It's still coming out. I'm going to allow that to sit for a minute. I'm going to go over and get the what's in the microwave out. And then again, I'm going to put that in the same way I did for the others. I'm going to do it for six minutes or six minutes total. And there you go. It's all ready. Well, not quite. <laughs> the hardest part, and I have to admit, the hardest part is allowing this to cool down to room temperature. You want to get in there, you want to open it up, you want to see what it looks like. But what's happening while it's cooling down, if there's any excess dye, the dye is still soaking into the wool. If you would take it out now, first of all, it's hot. And if you're using wool or mohair or any 100% uh, protein fiber, you want to keep the temperature the same because if you would rinse this, you have to use hot water. If you would use cold, you could shock it and do some felting. So what I often do is I allow it to cool down. Now I might start to maybe in a little bit, um, take it out of the container, open up the plastic a little bit. However, I found out that I don't have to do much rinsing if I allow it to totally cool down in the container and then I can rinse it at room temperature. I don't need to use hot water necessarily, but I can still use hot water. Now the waiting game begins. And there we have the yarn that was just dyed in the microwave for the weft. This is the fingering weight yarn. It's a shades of blue and green, exactly what I was looking for. Sometimes I can mix them together and have a new color by mixing the two together. But we'll actually see what happens and what they look like when we're all finished and they are dry. Of course, we have to wait until these get totally room temperature too before we rinse them. Well, one nice thing about having extra yarn is when I take a look at what's happening with the skeins I'm dyeing, and then I go over and I take a peek at the warp, I'm not sure if I'm going to like the way the result's going to be. I have two options. Sometimes I take the yarn that's been dyed and I over dye it. With this case, I'm not sure what I'd over dye it with, but I'll wait till it's totally dry and find out. I decided though, after looking at what I see over there, you'll see it later, I am, I've soaked some other yarn, a couple other skeins, in the same water that I had saved, and I have this water ready. When I don't know for sure what color will work the best, I almost always pick some kind of a gray, in this case a charcoal gray, and I'm going to stay with uh, the ProChem company. I could also use my Dharma dyes, but I'm going to also add just a little bit of the chestnut to it, just a tiny bit. So that's what I'm going to mix up next. I'm going to move this out of the way temporarily. I'll move all of these things in front here. Pause for a moment while I collect both of my gloves. All right, we have both gloves now. I'm very proud of myself. So far, I don't have blue, green, or brown hands. But by the end of this, you never know. I'm going to take and use a half a teaspoon of the gray. Put that in here. And I'm going to use a quarter of the chestnut. I want this to be more gray than brown, but a little bit of brown gray is okay. And as I did before, same thing, you can see this, I'm going to put a little bit of water in there, take one of my spoons that I have and start to dissolve the powder that's in there, and kind of stir a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm looking through the bottom, that's why it's nice to have glass, you can kind of look through and see what's happening, get a pretty good idea of what's going on there. I'm going to add a little bit more water. 
I don't need a whole lot because I'm going to be adding it to the water here. Now I also have uh, a little slurp of vinegar. Even though the water that the yarn is soaking in already has some vinegar. Again, if you're using citric, citric acid, you will do whatever the measurements are for that. Right. It's coming out to a nice gray. I'm going to pour that in there. Really stir it up. Now this time I would like the skeins to be as solid as possible, but it's okay to have them not totally solid. Again, the first thing I'm going to do is take them out. Get a little tangled together there. I try to get them separate because I'm going to try to dip them all kind of together. So let's squeeze water out of there as much as I can. You can see that off the camera or not. Each one of these. One more. I'll move this out of the way. And now, a little bit up here, camera-wise. There we go. So the plan is to spread these, all three, there are three of them here. This is the same yarn I had before. So I have them all about the same, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip them all in at the same time. Because sometimes when one area hits the water sooner than the other, it takes up the dye quicker. Maybe some of you already know that. So right now, push that in there. I really like the gray, nice charcoal gray. See some shading? The shading of the gray is fine. There was a little bit of that chestnut brown in there, not a lot. But I'm going to also kind of, what I say, massage a little bit. See if the dry dye gets in there. I can even check each skein to see what's happening. I guess I, I found out technically these are Hanks. Anyway, that's a whole other debate out there. Push them upside down. Again, whoop. this is superwash. Even if it was not superwash, I would probably do basically about the same. Since this is all covered with water, I don't need to put plastic over it. I could if it wasn't. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put it in the microwave for three minutes and then flip it after three. And again, allow it to cool down at room temperature before it is rinsed. And we're ready for the big reveal. This can be a little messy, so I do have a towel underneath here. And one nice thing, start to unroll it. I can see that I don't see a lot of colored dye. That is exciting. That's exactly what I wanted to see. And I don't see a lot of water coming out, so let's take the towel away. And start to unroll. You see a little bit of the dye there, but you don't see a lot. And there you go. That is the result of the warp. Soon, the, the first one that I dyed, the green, you can see there's still a little bit of color. I don't know if you can see the, a little bit of uh, color in the uh, water, but not much, just a little bit. And that's almost done. But like I added a little extra, decided to dye some gray because I believe that's going to look better when I weave. Those are some choices I sometimes make later on. I'm still going to allow all of these things to cool a little bit longer. Once they're totally more room temperature, I can actually touch them now without feeling the heat. Then I will rinse them. You can have two options. You can rinse them in a tub of water 
I actually put mine in the washing machine and let it soak, spin, soak, spin. I will also add some more vinegar if necessary. So I just wanted to let you see what happens when we unwrap everything. Well, welcome to the end or almost the end. It's the end of the dyeing session. I will have to get this on the loom maybe the next couple of weeks or maybe months and then you get to see what it looks like all finished. But give me some time and I'll show you. So here's the warp. Came out the way I expected. And like I said, I did two different dyeing for the weft yarn. The first were some skeins that came out a little lighter than I expected. So I had a choice. I could take these and I could dip them or dye them into some brown or gray to darken them. But instead, I used some more yarn and used to dye a combination of gray and a little bit of the brown that was in the warp. I think pretty sure I'm gonna like that better combination. Now I'll have to admit, if you're not quite sure, a shade of gray is usually a good choice for your weft. Thank you so much for watching and everyone take care.